हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज धीरज वेलकमिंग यू अगेन ऑन अनदर प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग वीडियो सो दिस क्वेश्चन वाज आस्ड बाय वन ऑफ आवर स्टूडेंट्स सो लेट अस डिस्कस अबाउट दिस क्वेश्चन एंड ट्राई टू लर्न सम लाइट सो लेट अस फर्स्ट रीड द क्वेश्चन सो यू कैन सी देयर इज अ सैटेलाइट ऑफ मास एम व्हिच इज लॉन्च वर्टिकली अपवर्ड विद वेलोसिटी u फ्रॉम द सरफेस ऑफ द अर्थ आफ्टर इट रीचेस द हाइट ऑफ r the height is measured from the surface always remember that okay now this height is also the radius of the earth after reaching it ejects a rocket of mass m by 10 and immediately after it the satellite starts moving in a circular orbit so we need to find out the kinetic energy of the rocket all right so you know if you do lot of problem solving yourself you will realize that this particular question will probably take up your at least 4 to 5 minutes so in case you are writing a j main exam and this kind of question comes up in during your first let us say first 15 or 20 minutes so i would advise you to mark this question to solve it later otherwise this question can really kill all your time all right so but right now we are here to learn the concept so let us proceed so let us say this is the earth okay now there is a rocket of mass m that is launched vertically from here okay so let us say it is launched like that with a velocity of u and once it reaches a radius r so i'll take lot of time to explain all right so that we can get it properly so after let us say it reaches a height r from the surface of the earth where r is a radius of the earth also after reaching here this mass m splits into two parts what happens it ejects a rocket of mass m by 10 okay so remaining mass of the satellite becomes 9m by 10 and then satellite starts moving in a circular orbit so right now when it is here when it is about to eject the rocket it was going radially outwards isn't it and immediately after let us say when it ejects a rocket let us say it ejects a rocket like this i'll put a point here let us say this small red dot is a rocket this rocket has been ejected now you can see the direction of ejection it cannot be ejected in let's say horizontal or vertical direction the reason is the satellite has to gain a tangential velocity let us say the satellite's velocity just after the ejection of the rocket is is v now can it have a radial component my dear friends of course not if there is a radial component the satellite will keep going away right but it has to immediately start revolving in a circle so that's why immediately after the ejection of the rocket the satellite's radial component of the velocity or you can say the component of velocity in the y direction where this is the y direction and this is the x direction so immediately after the ejection of the rocket the satellite's y direction momentum becomes zero momentum or velocity now this gives us a good amount of hint here so what you have to do is since there is a splitting of mass happening here and the rocket is getting ejected you can definitely conserve momentum along both x as well as y direction all right so let us do one thing the uh the rocket which is getting ejected we will assume its velocity along the x axis and along the y axis we are basically taking the components of the velocity so the rocket's velocity along the y axis let us say it is vy and the rocket's velocity along the x axis is let us say vx all right so keep 
noticing all these terms that we are using v is the velocity of the satellite after rocket has ejected and the mass of satellite has become 9m by 10 because m by 10 is the mass of the rocket itself all right so let us proceed from here till the point the rocket is getting ejected i can conserve the energy right so i can say u1 plus k1 is equal to u2 plus k2 this is the conservation of mechanical energy equation fine so i am going to take mass of the earth as m which they want you to take so that's why they are given it and g is a gravitational constant r is also given my dear friends all right so in this equation we'll just have to substitute u1 is what minus of g m into small m by r this is point number one all right and this is point number two point number two is just before the ejection of the rocket fine this plus kinetic energy half m into u square that is equal to potential energy at point number two which is minus of g m into m divided by 2r so rocket just about to come out plus k2 half m into let us say velocity is v1 for the rocket when sorry for the satellite when the rocket just about to come out of the velocity of the satellite is v1 All right So you are on the right track. Don't worry. So this is the velocity in which direction along the y direction for the satellite just before the rocket is about to eject out of it. Now what we will do? We will conserve the momentum along the x axis and along the y axis. So conservation of linear momentum, my dear friends, we have to use along the x axis. How will I use it? I will write along the x axis, there was no momentum initially for the satellite, isn't it? That is equal to m by 10 into velocity of the satellite vx minus, sorry, velocity of the rocket vx minus 9 m by 10, which is the remaining satellite's mass, that into v. Fine. So this is the conservation linear momentum along the x-axis. Now the equation along the y-axis. Along the y-axis, you will see that immediately after the ejection of the rocket, the remaining power, remaining portion of the satellite should not have any velocity along the y-axis because it has to move in a circle. So entire velocity has to be tangential. I hope you're getting my point here. So along the y-axis, initial momentum is m into v1, which is nothing but m into root over u square minus gm by r. This is your momentum of the satellite along with the rocket before rocket came out. That should be equal to the final momentum right so the rocket's final momentum along the y-axis is m by 10 vy and the remaining portion of the satellite doesn't have any momentum along the y-axis as immediately after it starts revolving in a circle so these are the two equations fine so from here you can from the first equation you will get the value of Vx. Vx is equal to 9 times V. Now, you know, you can uh, basically arrange the term in any which way. It entirely depends upon what 
the question is asking right the question is asking kinetic energy of the rocket and what is the kinetic energy of the rocket kinetic energy of the rocket is nothing but half mass of the rocket which is m by 10 into vx square plus vy square right so this bracket term is the total velocity square of the rocket so that is what we have to find out so we have found out vx now we'll be finding vy so vy is equal to 10 times root over u square minus gm by r right so you have vx and vy but the problem is the problem is that the vx is given in terms of an unknown quantity v so do we know v so if you think carefully you will understand that the fact that the satellite is revolving at a distance of 2r its velocity is automatically fixed. It has to have certain tangential velocity. So let us find out how we can proceed from here on. So whenever something is moving in a circular orbit, we tend to write force towards the center is equal to mv square by r, right? So I hope all of that you remember. So g m into mass of the rocket which is m by 10 divided by the distance square which is 2r square that should be equal to m by 10 into v square divided by radius so this is nothing but force toward the center is equal to mv square by r you can probably use some direct expressions also but don't you worry if you know the basics. I think I have uh, written small m in terms of capital M. So I'll replace it. This is capital M. So small m by 10 goes away. One of the 2r is also gone. So from here, you'll get v is equal to root over g m by 2r. And you can get Vx is equal to 9 times V, which is 9 times root over Gm by 2R. So, my dear friends, here is your second equation. Now, you have now Vy and Vx, the kinetic energy of the rocket, which is asked, is simply equal to half m by 10, m by 10 into let me write over here into Vx square plus Vy square. Now, although we have solved the question just for the clarity of the concepts, but if such kind of question, let's say you get in J main, you need to immediately identify that this question could eat up a lot of your time. So you need to skip it as soon as possible. And I'm not saying that you should skip it and don't come back. At the end, in case you have time left or whatever simple or easy questions you might have been getting, if you have solved all of them, then you can definitely come back to this question and solve. All right. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you have learned something today. Bye-bye.